In a sentence, why does China do this so well? Well, there was really never a time when China was looking at deploying renewable energy technologies domestically mm -hmm. without also developing a domestic industry mm -hmm. to support that deployment. Um, you know, the very early years of wind power uh, deployment in China, for example, in the 1980s, you saw you know, a handful of turbines mm -hmm. that were imported from Europe. Mm -hmm. But it really quite early, um, as early as the mid-1990s, they were looking at building up the industry. And mm -hmm. the policies that the Chinese government has put in place have really made a concerted effort to not just deploy technology, and their deployment policies are, are really quite strong, but also to build up a local industry. And that includes the research and development that they've been investing, um, as well as policies that uh, you know help to really encourage Local, the use of local technology. Is part of this based on demand? This electricity demand is growing so outrageously in that country they have to find some way to supply that need? Absolutely. I mean, we've seen uh, the, the common statistic is about two new coal power plants built in China a week. Mm -hmm. They've been putting in about 100 gigawatts of new power plant capacity a year. Mm -hmm. um, while they're now the largest wind energy market in the world, wind energy still contributes Just a fraction. Less right? than 1% yeah, of yeah. electricity generation. So, um, you know, but that's China still does everything big. <laughs> but that's still significant for a country that is the world leader in energy demand. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that China is doing what they can to try to diversify away from coal. Mm -hmm. um, coal has a lot of benefits to China. It has energy security benefits. They have a large domestic coal resource. Right. Um, but, you know, the environmental challenges of, of relying on coal are, are mm -hmm. quite obvious. When you go to China, you, mm -hmm. you experience the local pollution. Um, as well as the climate change uh, contribution that, that China's coal power uh, fleet provides. China does everything big. I mean, mm -hmm. China's uh, power sector is growing at, at an extremely rapid rate. Mm -hmm. um, China is now the largest wind power market in the world. Um, when China is looking to develop wind power technology, they're not just looking to look, you know, at sort of mid-size wind turbines. <laughs> they want multi-gigawatt scale wind turbines. The biggest in the world. The biggest in the world. The wind farms they're looking at building are mm -hmm. gigawatt scale wind farms. And no other country in the world is looking at, you know, 10 plus gigawatt wind farms like China is mm -hmm. looking at building out in Gansu province. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think this is really, this shows that they're, they're serious about this technology. Um, mm -hmm. The government has put many policies in place at a very basic level, Joanna, we have the same clean energy resources that China does. The sun shines a lot here. We have, especially today, pretty considerable wind. Why is that country leading the way? Why aren't we? Well, it's really very much part of the policy framework that the Chinese government has created domestically. Uh, here in the United States, uh, most of our wind energy development, for example, has been driven by uh, tax credits, mm -hmm. uh, through production tax credit, more recently the investment tax credit. Um, but this has been a policy that's really been off and on again over the last couple of decades. Uh, you see when you look at the wind energy development numbers here in the U.S., one year it's very high, the next year right. it's very low, right. and this has to do with the consistency of the policies which we're providing. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chinese government now has a feed-in tariff uh, in place for wind energy. This sets a fixed price, uh, which guarantees wind energy producers a certain price over a long period of time uh, that they're going to get for the wind energy electricity. And so this mm -hmm. allows for uh, a long-term, you know, investment decision, long-term investment decisions to be made by mm -hmm. developers. This allows technology manufacturers to know how much they should be producing to meet the demands of the domestic mm -hmm. market. The final topic, Joanna, the issue of the uh, the the. World Trade Organization complaint, or at least pending complaint. Um, without getting into the particulars of the case, what would this mean for China? Is this going to affect the way it does business, the policies it has in place for clean energy? Yeah. Um, well, I, I think it's fair to say that many of the policies that China has had in place, um, mm -hmm. and, and not just recently, these have been policies that have been in place for the last several years, mm -hmm. um, could potentially be challenged under the WTO. So this may have an effect. Uh, I think it will. It'll have an effect in terms of U.S.-China relations. In that, <laughs> um, you know, this is. Uh, starting a trade dispute with mm -hmm. one of our major trading partners is never going to be uh, uh, an easy road. But mm -hmm. I think that in terms of the effect it's going to have on the wind industry in China or the other renewable energy technology industries, which mm -hmm. may, be, may be targeted down the road. Um, I mean, at this point, you know, China has three wind turbine manufacturers in the top 10 worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, China has removed the local content requirement, which had been um, one of the subjects of, of criticism by right. U.S. And, and other foreign manufacturers in, in terms of it, it hurting their ability to compete in the Chinese market. Mm -hmm. um, however, at this point, um, almost every foreign wind turbine manufacturer has a production facility in China. <laughs> they can meet the local content requirement. Uh -huh. 
Um, and you know, the Chinese wind turbine manufacturers have have risen to the forefront of. Uh, of technology, mm -hmm. so it's it's really not going to hurt them at this point by removing it. So, what does this mean for the U.S.? I mean, is it is there clearly uh, a cause and effect that's harming the industry here? Well, I think that um, one of the challenges is that it's it's very hard to really separate out the nationality of various <laughs> companies uh -huh, that are manufacturing uh -huh. these technologies. This is, of course, true not just in renewable energy technology industries. Um, components come from all over. Components come from all over. You know, these companies are increasingly global. Um, they're not just manufacturing the components of the wind turbines all around the world, but they're mm -hmm. conducting their research and development, uh, their innovation activities from around the world. They're hiring workers from around the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're going to see a situation where you know you're not just going to have foreign wind turbine manufacturers looking to sell their products in China, partially made in China, partially made in Europe and the U.S. You're going to see Chinese wind turbine manufacturers looking to sell their products in the U.S. market. Some of them might be made in the U.S. Some components might come from China. Some might come from Brazil. Mm, yeah. You already see many U.S. manufacturers like GE uh, sourcing their wind turbines for the U.S. market all around the world, right. including in China, South America. So I, I think we need to stop thinking about this in, in quite you know such a narrow uh, nationalistic perspective. Think mm -hmm. a little bit more about um, when it comes to the U.S., our role in these industries moving forward, where are comparative advantages, mm -hmm. uh, what U.S. policymakers can do to really promote uh, the technologies that we're going to need to deploy in this country if we're going to address climate change and, and, uh -huh. and reduce our own emissions. Um, if it makes sense to import some technologies from China, I think we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean there aren't many other areas where I think uh, U.S. companies and U.S. technology can mm -hmm. play a really important role going forward.